everybody and welcome to the Country Basketball League Grand Final between the Bendigo Braves and the Mildura Heat. What a fantastic game this has lined up to be. The Mildura Heat 9-1 for the season. The Bendigo Braves 7-3. has been an interesting road to the finals. Uh, the Heat beating Melton 93-78 and the Braves won their semi-final 80-63. Now, Trent, you were there. Uh, well, you saw the game, the Bendigo Braves versus Castlemaine in that game, 80-63. to 63. That was a tough contest, you say. Uh, welcome. It's great to be here at the Melton Basketball Stadium. And obviously, we just saw Bendigo have a win in the women, but we'll get to that a little bit later. As for your question, Todd, in regards to the game between Bendigo and Castlemaine last week, it was a bit of a grudge match because earlier in the season, Castlemaine went to Bendigo and in what was a tight one, outscored him in the fourth to win by 20. And Bendigo returned the favour at Castlemaine Stadium last week. In what was a bit of a controversial affair, there was a few tech fouls, there was some, a lot of uh, intensity between a lot of the former Bendigo players that now play for Castlemaine. And uh, Bendigo just remained with a poised head despite being the younger team. And uh, they did make a living at the free throw line behind Lockie O'Brien, uh, 32 points. Sorry, Lockie Liam. Liam's 32. <laughs> and, um, no, Lockie. Either way. <laughs> You'll figure it out by the end of the night. Um, but he, I think, had 18 points at the free throw line in that game. And uh, being the league MVP, uh, no doubt that we'll be looking for another strong performance from him again this evening. Uh, last time these two teams met, it was a 76-71 victory for Mildura, who finished with a 9-1 record. Bendigo coming in with a 7-3 record. And, yes, it was Lachlan O'Brien who... Uh, won the MVP, and we'll discuss it a little bit later, but he's not in the league All-Star 5. So we'll just put that little teaser out there about Very the how, what, and Very why. interesting. Uh, but, yeah, we're in for a big one tonight. And, obviously, uh, having a little bit of a chat with the Mildura coach, who everyone's favourite podcaster on the Country Basketball League page. Uh, you know, Mildura coming off a big win last week against Melton. They were 9-1, Melton 7-3, and, and, obviously, Melton were hosting this grand final tonight. They were... Definitely hoping that they would have been here in the men, but it is Mildura and Bendigo. Uh, the standout player, I guess, for Mildura. Todd, you know uh, a little bit about uh, Trake Juan Rudd Morfo. I'll tell you what, he is worth the cost of admission. I'm excited to see Rudd Morfo go about it. I've been lucky enough to see him at the Country Jamboree playing in underage competitions. But it's great to see him here in open age competitions and talking about him. So he's, he's actually five. starting on the bench. Interesting. So very interesting. He's got but, the uh, knee brace. I wonder if he that's does, right. Yeah, he does have that knee heavily strapped. So I did watch him in the warm-up. Well, he did look slightly ginger on it. But, you know, that can be his gait and the way he walks at both players or both sets of teams coming out onto the floor now. That's well, we've been told he is the key. And if he gets going, he could be the danger man. But also in the All-Star 5 and one of the starters tonight is number 21, uh, Taryn Shaddock. I'll let you quickly run through the Mildura. I'll do the Bendigo starters while you do Mildura Heat. Uh, <laughs> we've got Isaac Murphy, who's the captain of the Brave Senior Team as well. Isaac Fafana, both Liam and Lockie O'Brien, and Wills, uh, Casey Willis, who had 17 last week, is in the jump. And the CBL Grand Final for the Northwest men is underway here at Melton. Bendigo win the tip. Going to the left of your screen, getting the ball through hands. Here goes O'Brien, drops it off the rules, but he passes it to the corner of the stadium, and it will be Mildura Ball. Would you like to run us through the starters there, Todd? Yes, certainly can. Mildura with first possessions and on the ball already early is Hammond. As Hammond will bring it down the floor, he'll let to go wide, and now ball in hand there is Luth. Definitely expect some Shut defensive off. intensity up the floor, and then it's both teams... Forcing a turnover early. A travel violation there. It's a an unusual mistake early, but grand finals can bring up different all sorts of nerves as O'Brien brings it down the floor. He just kicks it across to Fafana. A little handoff here. Ball on the 45. Fafana setting the screen, then rolling. Kick out to the top. Wills. Little up fake, him. and then Wills goes hard with the left and finishes off the window. That was a lovely two. Where well, there's a Wills, there's a way, and Casey gets down the lane for the easy, well, not so easy, the nice lefty deuce. Here goes Hammond. Gets to the middle against Murphy. Isolated now on the wing was Jack Bakewell. Swings it back, and there is Taron Shaddock, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, he probably suggests he's their team leader and is a member of the All-Star 5 in the Northwest 
of the CBL this season, showing us why they're getting Mildura up to the 3-2 lead as on the board is Drew Fillmore. Little miss there by Fafana. Now Mildura down the floor, baseline drive. I'll kick out to the top. Back to back, Jacks from and there. He down. is. Shut off for three. And if he's firing, Mildura bringing the heat. Didn't get your prediction before the game. We might have to do that in the first time out. Oh, there's an. Oh, he was wide open. Get the cutter on the baseline there. Murphy spots up in the corner. What did we talk about the pet peeve in the women's game, my friend? Always tough. You've got to watch those feet. And know where the lines are. It looks like he's operating with a you know, a bit of a size 12 or a 13. It's uh, You get to press for room there, but if the men can do it in the NBA, then they got size 18s and they can fit That's in. That's true. Anyone can. Is Hammond. He goes down the lane. Looks to finish. Couldn't quite in the end. Rebound comes. I'll we'll get another look at it. Now reset the play here. I think it was a bit of a block there. Shuttock didn't reset. He's Shuttock. He goes up with it. Shuttock with the floater. That one missing. Now get another look again. Benigo will be upset with that. Multiple looks here for the heat. And then a jump ball. And possession will stay with Mudrua. Benigo will be definitely frustrated. You don't want to give a team this many looks early on their offensive sets. It'd be a baseline ball here. There's Luth to inbound. Luth does. Shuttock. He's comfortable shooting from three. And there he is. That's another dagger. And he's just getting real comfortable in this game. Three threes for him. Nine points, nine to two. Left, right, left hook. Money Mayweather style by Shadok. Can Bendigo answer? That's a nice way just to regain a bit of composure. And not do, how long do you go for doing the quick Greg Popovich early time out? If they get another, <laughs> if they get a stop in the score here, you've got to think about taking one, surely. You certainly do. As we discussed earlier, it's a game of momentum. As the Braves look to inbound here. Managed to get the ball in. O'Brien at the rack, just missing. Rebound comes. Now the heat away. And O'Brien will be the man they look to just to steady the ship at times like this as well. But, geez, red hot. Not an assist as well on this one. Another three ball. There's that timeout that might have been a possession late as the three ball was up two ball. With his first bucket of the evening, 12-2. How do you do? Bendigo forced to call that timeout. You hate to burn them early, but that is a much-needed one. Well, that... It was a 12-2 run. Well, question there is, the Benigo had the ball. They're down, what was it, 9-2, 7.34 to play in the first quarter. If they execute there, then everything's all right. It's 9-4, even if that three goes down, you still feel like you've got a little bit happening. What we saw Mark Alabakov do in the women's game is in that situation. Well, that was a little bit tighter, but... Did call a timeout to draw up a nice play, make sure we get the right shot, and uh, play from there. But, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, you've still got to trust your guys, don't you? And uh, as a coach, you can't make the ball go in the basket. You can just give your troops the best opportunity. So let's see what Bendigo can draw up here out of the timeout. Well, hot start here by the Heat. They've been able to shoot the rock from the outside. Not a big three-point shooting team, but today... It's been their look for them, and it's working, so why change it early? As Bendigo will bring it in. For Fana to do the duties, he'll get it to Liam O'Brien. He'll hand it off, and here's Murphy. Now for Fana, O'Brien. The other O'Brien. Back, to, Back to Murphy at the top. Murphy... Looking to drive here. Finds himself on the baseline. Five seconds on the shot clock. It looks like he's going to back his man down. Two, one. Fade away. Woo! There it is. Beautiful fade and great finish. Dirk Murphy on the baseline. Isaac Nowitzki, something like that. Nice drive. Drops it in. And tell you what, this new Jura offense, it is clicking very nicely. 14 to 4. A two there yeah. from Bakewell. He had 24 in the semi-final. He'll be looking to continue that form. As O'Brien swings the ball. They go into the corner here. Now O'Brien going up with a left. Continuation. There it is. It's an and one. Brilliant play. Great finish on the left. And he finds himself at the charity stripe. I feel like I've dropped the ball here. Don't have the referees' names. But they are the same referees that were at the Benigo Castle Main game. Last Saturday night at Castle Main Stadium. So, Lachlan, to them to uh, be, you know, we get the best rest for the best games. Lachlan O'Brien makes that. 
That's his 56th three throw make for the season. He leads the league in three throw makes. He's got an ability to get to the charity stripe often. He drives hard to the rack most times. There's another three point look here from the Heat. That one missing. And here he goes Bendigo. trying to settle, settle the ship, but turns it over. Shadok definitely been the best player of the night in the first four minutes. What's he got? Nine points already? And his assist is Murphy. He now also has a turnover. Murphy gets it, goes coast to coast. And a couple of just veteran buckets there from the Braves captain, Isaac Murphy, who just gets a little bit of water. And yes, the people in the bar on the baseline are open, but uh, they're not going to get you any points. So 12 2 run has been wiped off now. It's 7 2 back for Bendigo. So after that timeout, they've really responded well. O'Brien. See what he can manufacture. There's the baseline drive, then the floater. That one missed. Still rebound contest. Comes out to O'Brien. He'll get it to his brother in O'Brien. He goes hard to the rack. And there it is. Nice. Another finish. Great penetrating dribble and good finish off the window. So we've got Rockland's number 10, Liam's number. One, just for yourself, just to and myself, just to remind us. Lock, 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 Lockie's the one who's about to finish there for you. There you go. I was about to say, Liam's the facilitator, Lockie's the scorer. And uh, just how many like, times do you think they've done that in the backyard? Well, probably doing that one in the room, that three man <laughs> game, I think, my friend. So, heading into the stripe, he had 18 free throws last week, and we'll, we'll say that. As we mentioned, Shadok may have a little bit of claret on the arm. He's been told to come off and clean that up as Rudd Morfall will check into the game. My man, Rudd Morfall. So he is a young kid, a real young player. The most electrifying man in Mildura, they say. <laughs> 17 points in the semi final was Rudd Morfall as he checks into the game. Was the catalyst for the success for most of this season? Say 17 in the final, in the semi, was it? Correct. Yep. Loves the three ball. There's Rudd Moore for. He leads Mildura in three-point attempts and makes. Tell you what, watching him in the warm-ups with that lefty and that bounce reminds me of that AJ Johnson in the other while. Shot from the corner. Mildura again leaning on that three ball. Rudd Moore for in the rebounding contest. Didn't quite get it. They'll swing again here. Here comes Pillmore. They'll go out now. Shot coming from Hammond. Hammond with a three. That's a certified hammer. Well, Bendigo had a good run there to get it back to two. I think they might have only given that one or two, did they? Must have towed the line. Or were they 14? May have been. Nice little shake and bake, but the long two is no good. And then reaching for the steal was O'Brien, which helps the fast break start. Formula Drew, which was through Bakewell, no good. Liam O'Brien in transition drops it off. Interesting take by Lawler. And Lockie O'Brien with the two to cut it back to two. Your league MVP. And he improves his tally to nine. Here's Rudd Morfor on the ball, just setting the offense. Real calm customer. Drives in the kick out dish. Three ball yeah. comes, that's another dagger. A ball, beautiful work there from Drew Pillmore. Are they at six threes this quarter or, or five? It's at least five. Maybe six. Good drive. They're going to get it back. Good defense by your man. Turnover for Vandenberg. Coming in now. Interesting, burn. interesting potential adjustment here for the Braves. Do so they come out now to pro protect the perimeter but will then that open up the keyway it'll be interesting to see how that well, matures little, throughout the game maybe Hammond, a little 3-2 zone or something Hammond looking to drive then the kick out again oh, here's Pillmore if he's Pillmore another three that's back to back another triple doesn't matter what defense you play if he's going to be making them you take the three away he's going to take you to the block you play off he's going to make the three it's going to be a long night for Bendigo Look to penetrate with the dribble, then the kick out. Here comes Lockie O'Brien shooting from the baseline. Missing. Pillmore fought hard in the rebound contest. Couldn't get it. Great dish and good finish. Wow, and I one. Finish Vandenberg. Jet Vandenberg went hard to the rack. And he earned himself an extra. That was beautiful play. Great cut and good pass. This game is heating up. Good thing, though, as well as Mildura have shot, um, their defense... Bendigo have not had a lot of clean looks. Even those couple of tough ones Murphy made, they weren't really in the flow of the offense. So, other than the, the steal, 
So got to credit Mil Mildura's defense at this point. Three Extra points, good. Three-point play there for the Braves. Luth. Look to swing it here. Here's Hammond. Hammond almost saw the pass there. Bakewell, hand off. Now Luth spinning. Great pass inside. Couldn't quite finish. Let's see what Benigo can do here in transition. Goodwin. Good pass into the middle. Vandenberg. Two. Back to back buckets for Vandenberg. His confidence will be lifting as he Five makes a, a big impact off the bench. Yeah, very much so. Five in a row cuts the lead to three. Check them. That's what you need as a coach. When things are a bit astray, bring in a super sub. Where you can just change the tempo and the energy of the game. And that's a nice defense from Bendigo. Against the 9-1 and one Mildura Heat. Shaddock checks back into the game. He checked out for a blood rule. He's now back and he has that taped up. So he had a bit of claret coming from the forearm. And The only loss this season that Mildura had was in round 5 against Bacchus Marsh, 83-75. to 75. For those playing at home. And everything's all good. There's a baseline here as they come off a box set up. A little behind the back pass. The run more for. He tries his first look from downtown. Missing. Rebound comes up. Five right here. Jump all awarded. Possession arrow to the Braves. Just working out the substitutions as well here. As Casey Wills comes back in to the game for Lawler. Here in the CBL. The C -ball. C -ball. We used to call the SEABL the CBL, didn't we? See, I think the senior league. <laughs> Correct. Here we are in the CBL. And there's another forced turnover by Madura. And coming in the sub here, we've got number 12, Ned Oldham. Bendigo with a win earlier tonight. Very, uh, I'm not really sure the better way to describe it. Comprehensive was the word I was after against Kyneton. Winning by a bit over 30. Nice take and one to come. What a quarter here by the All-Star 5 member, Taron Shaddock. That's number 11 for Taron Shaddock. He's worked into this game nicely. He was only forced off the floor due to a bit of blood and since he's come back on, he's... So he made three threes and now he's got... Well, setting himself up, setting himself up one for the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Didn't jinx that one. The hard work, the three-point play, and Bendigo will look to answer back here. Burn on the ball. I'll look to swing it. Here's Goodwin. Almost lost his footing there. you got to watch those white lines. Vandenberg nice in to Wills. Kick out. Good win. There's a whistle for a push. And two. They're going to go to the line for two. Well, that would be baseline ball. Well, one official's at the baseline. One official signaled to the score bench that it was two shots. No, and well, then it is going to be two shots. So a bit of confusion uh, there. I thought it was going to be baseline. Bonus. Ah, correct. Yep. There you go. How silly of me to miss that one. There's Mildura now in the penalty. They've committed five team fouls. 26 to 20. And Wills at the line. He makes his third point of the game. Comes in tonight, averaging 13.4 points on the season. Which is pretty handy. Good for 32nd overall in total points in the league. It's Casey Wills. Mildura Heat fans start to stomp their feet in the crowd, make a bit of noise, but that doesn't put off Wills. Got a good turn here tonight, I would say. Three to 500 people in the house. Rod Morfall with a little jab step and drive. Run out of room. Got it back. Travel. Braves ball, turnover. Minute 31 here, four points of difference. This is a good opportunity for the Braves to just maybe get ahead into the break. They can score here and get another stop. Well, if you can get it at least tied, I think from the way it was down 12 early, 12 to 2, sorry, down 10, 12 to 2, you'd be right. happy. But if it goes the other way, you need a bit of soul searching. Coast to coast, does it? The old MJ up and around and over the head. That's where it probably should have made the safe pass to the corner, like is done there by Vandenberg and a nice finish by O'Brien. And O'Brien's got 11, but you'd almost say Vandenberg's probably been the best for Bendigo so far this quarter. Has been well, Vandenberg. I've been, liked his game so far. Good pick up there. Knight out to the top. 
Oldham, no, missing that one. Rebound comes. Then you go again in transition. Burns to Goodwin. Goodwin hard at it. No. Got worried out of it from behind. 44 seconds to play. Oh, two in for one. Turn. Two for one opportunity here for the Heat. You don't want to go too... Well, that's an easy lay. He's blown the lay. He's made everything that's been out there. And then sometimes the easy deuces, you just take it for granted. But it was good clock management there. They will have enough time to run a decent set. Benigo could have gone a quick two for one if they wanted it. Nice behind the back by Vandenberg. Wales has been in the key for a very long time. But the three on the wing is a very nice one from Mitchell Goodwin. Pendigo just sneaked their noses in front here, leading by a point. Well, Last, you called it. You called that. Last 10 seconds here of the quarter. Shot from the elbow. It'll give them the lead if it goes. They don't. And the half court by the Brina had a chance. There's a chance. Oh, 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 no. So Bendigo Braves will go into the quarter, leading by a solitary point. They worked super hard in the back end of that quarter. They were down so much at the start to a 12-2 run to the heat. And then after that, they had a timeout. And then from there, they just built it and built it and built it. And now they find themselves leading by a point at the quarter time break. Well, we did talk about that timeout, about the adjustments that we b were made. And, uh, well, from there, it was 25 to 14 in, fa uh, in favour of the Braves. So, obviously, the right adjustments. And I'll tell you what, I've got to put it down. I haven't seen a lot of him, but Jet Vandenberg, five points. But, boy, he uh, created some opportunities defensively, made the right passes on offense, I'd say he'd probably have th th at least two or three dimes, probably both to O'Brien, at least two to O'Brien. I think he might have one to Wills as well. So uh, O'Brien is the leading scorer, though, your league's MVP, and second overall in the league behind Bowl Back uh, from, I believe, Bacchus. No, not Bacchus Marsh. Sorry, I'll get that Bowl right Back for, from Melton. From Melton, sorry, correct. Should have known that one. Bowl Back plays NBL 1 for the Melbourne Tigers. He, the year before that, he was at, at Keel or Thunder, the good Keel or... Uh, player but uh, he is local here is bolt back and if you follow him on socials he's practicing every single day As he's he does here. not miss an opportunity to get some shots up but that's, that's what you with your commentary mate practicing every day <laughs> in the shower in the, in the driveway that's the one it's uh, the oh, shower is good you get a little bit of reverb but uh, you get a little bit extra it's, uh, <laughs> i uh, managed to catch ball back actually in the melton thoroughbreds in action at castle main about a month ago and yeah very uh very good physique and very polished game as i said he uh, he did lead the league this season with 222, 224 total points, so averaging just over 20 a game. But that's one thing. I'll put this one to you while well, we've got a little bit of break. NBA or the, in the big leagues, your scoring leader, they usually go by average. But with the way the world is now and so many guys with their load management, don't you feel that endurance and uh, that longevity and, and that should be a category that is based on, on your total points? Yeah, well, if they can measure it... Uh points per output, maybe minutes into the points and work out how many minutes on the floor to your output, something like that. Yeah, but then you've got one guy who plays 10 minutes coming off the bench and scores 20 points and all of a sudden he's... Uh, I mean, that's why they have parameters, I guess. Have a couple of minimums to it, but yeah. uh, interesting take on that one. There's, the analytics of the game is as it furthers on, there's so much to it. I'll tell you what's a simple analytic. When you turn the ball over, it's not good. <laughs> so that's uh, or, a good defensive start for Bendigo. And or if you put the ball in the hoop more times than the other team, you, you should win the game. That's Depends how far <laughs> you do it from. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yes, you're correct there. So CBL final. Trent Bice here made the trip down for this one with Todd. Todd, Todd on air. <laughs> where, where, where do we find you, Todd. Oh, you can find me everywhere in, on in uh, basketball stadium. Twitter, Instagram, Todd on the mic. If you're, Todd on the mic. Sorry, if you're really interested, mic. but I don't think they'd be interested in my babblings as they go hard to the rack. The Braves just missed that one. Rebound comes. Pilmore with the rebound. He'll hand it off. Down the floor here is Luth. They'll go out to the corner. That man, he's been on fire in the corner. Then Pilmore will shoot it. Pilmore shooting the rock. He misses that one. And Bendy go away. Well, I wouldn't, wouldn't have minded uh, Coach Sammy drawing one up for Pilmore there after he made the couple in that first quarter, but you now that the tempo of the game slowed down, the adjustments have been made, I think a few of the nerves are out now for both teams, it'll be interesting just to see who can execute a little bit better and if you're going with the lefty James Harden style fadeaway like that all night, it might be a long one for Bendigo, but he's quite silky on that move, and even silkier in transition is uh, this ba uh, number 11, Bakewell, Bakewell yep. again Bakewell with a beautiful finish. 24 points in the semi-final leading into this one. It's his first points of the night. He'll be looking to get hot. On the ball now is Bendigo as they move it around quickly. They've got had some good movement early, and that pass was picked off nicely by Shaddock. 
Shadok playing a great game early, defensively and offensively. Definitely the MVP today. There's the teardrop floater from Hammond. He takes his tally to five. And the Mildura lead to three. They have the only two buckets of this second, excuse me, period. O'Brien loves the right drive. Caught off guard. Gets himself to the line. And you asked about last week. He had 18 free throws. There was quite a few in the bonus and off some uh, technicals and flagrants and whatever towards the end of a, of a, of a blowout. But uh, he did a very good job. What Bendigo did last week against Castle Mainside is it was a physical game, but they were getting into the bonus early. And because of that in the second and third quarter, being in the bonus for seven or eight minutes left, they were getting to the line a lot. And because they were smart, though, they weren't just staying spread out and jacking threes. They were having plays like that. Very dissective, trying to get in the lanes, attacking from the angles, and that's just smart basketball. Get your opponent in foul trouble, get yourself to the line, it can be an easy game. Lock on O'Brien now with 13, he makes them both, he's earned them the hard way as well. well down actually, the floor is shut off. So I will actually note that uh, one of his opponents from last weekend, also a member of the All Star Five, Trent Leach from Castle Maine. Show! Oh, Turnaround jumper goes in and he gets the bonus! How many points has he got now? 14. He is moving up 14, quickly. Well, we've had, what, 12 minutes of action, but he was on the bench for two, getting that little bit of blood cuffed up. So there's your uh, points per minute stat. There you go. Just misses that one. Couldn't quite make good on that, and the rebound comes from Wills, and he'll get the ball in hand of his trusty point guard in Liam O'Brien. Now Murphy back to O'Brien. He's looking to drive. Great baseline pass to his brother. That's a nice finish. And one. That was good. He saw him on the baseline. He said, brother, have one of those. And Lachlan O'Brien will now go to the line for the extra. Again, finding himself at the charity stripe. Well, you asked about the boys doing it in the backyard earlier. I reckon that might have been one of the ones when you're running out of the door on the way to school. The toaster pops. You just flick one out to your brother in the car and, hey, we'll have Brecky on the way. He knew exactly where he was going to be on that baseline cut. <laughs> you can pull me up on the nonsense analogies anytime. Oh, no, I like right. it. Please bring it as much <laughs> as possible. But you can't, you can't beat a brotherhood connection. You know, they swing the ball here. They heat another three-point attempt. This one missing. Run more for Tried to clash the glass. Away is Murphy here. He's going to slow it up, and they'll get a good look. Hand off. No, he didn't hand off. They go to the corner. Here's O'Brien. And the little hezzy. Nice patience. Look, and then they'll go into the middle for Fana. Back out to O'Brien. He puts the ball to the floor. Gets to the elbow. For Fana will set it up. Back out to O'Brien. He goes from three-point down. That misses. Was it a pass? Maybe. Wills went up with it. And he's fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Mills has been solid all season for Bendigo and just that nice steady presence inside. And uh, talk about developing young players. It could have been very easy to play someone like Isaac Murphy or even bring a Billy Smythe. Last season's league MVP with Castle Maine, but a member who played quite a lot of minutes for Bendigo in the NBL 1 this season to bring him down and play that. But obviously having a guy like Willis in the action... Uh, He's been solid for them tonight. Definitely in the paint so far. And saying that, he now goes to the line. I'd say 17 last week. Is that right? See, I pumped him up too much again. You've got to be careful with that. <laughs> well, 17 last week for Wills. Finishing on that one, Wills. He evens up this game. It's 32 apiece. This one is going to be a, a tight contest all the way down the wire. I was asking pre-game everyone's predictions, and I got a different answer every time. Driving hard to the rack. That one missed. Rebound comes here from O'Brien. He's going to go hard down the floor. Lachlan O'Brien gets it to Wills. Wills goes at it. He's fouled. He's going to go to the line again. Mildura find themselves in the penalty early in the quarter. They were in the penalty in that first quarter, and they're going to be in it again here. Well, this is what we discussed about. This is what happened in Castle Main last week. Bendigo attack, get to the line, get in the bonus early, get some easy buckets. We've well, got a timeout called by Bendigo because they'll have a chat. Just about uh, the lovely hospitality we've received here as well. This is my first time at this stadium. It's uh, quite an impressive layout they've got going on here. It is fantastic, Cobble Bank Stadium. It's a a newer addition to the Melton Council. You've got the three courts here, which we're in, and you've got the three courts out the back as well. It's fantastic facilities, and great to see Melton Basketball Club, a club that's really on the rise so in the Country Basketball Association. They also play in the Jamborees as well. It's great. Mm -hmm. 
so much housing and development coming out of this area as well. This yep. club is, is going to be one to look out for in the future as they continue to get a, a bigger population moving out into Melbourne's west. And we won't go into it too much, but we just got the inside word well, about the uh, relegation that's going to be coming in between the NBL 1 and the big B levels over the next couple of seasons. So a uh, nice bit of accountability that will be coming to our, well, our regional teams and clubs, which, which is nice to hear. And speaking of uh, what's nice to hear, we'll, at halftime, we will have the women's championship coach, Mark Alabakov, joining us for a quick chat, unless it looks like his team might be running for the bus. He might be getting out of here, so <laughs> he might have missed our chance. But he did say he'll come and have a quick chat with us, so hopefully that's too good, because he's actually won four championships this year. Huge. An assistant coach with the Youth League. Yep. He won tonight. NBL won, and he had another one in there somewhere. He's just pumping out championships, Mark Alabakov. As Wills misses that first one. The night that he won the NBL 1 championship, he ducked across town from Knox to Keel all quickly and got there just in time for the youth game. But that's, oh, that's right. That was the two, the youth league and the women. The and fixed, then, yeah, in the and same the night. CBR, yeah, yeah, that fixture go. was pushed back as well to accommodate, and Shadok yep. is there looking to drive. Shadok with the drive, left hand finish. He's a little bit of jelly one. as well. Well, I wouldn't say the one-man show, but he's definitely um, been the rudder for Mildura when uh, he got him going, but also when things have been a bit shaky. He's just steadied the ship. Wow. Corner Big three. basket there from Answer. Lachlan O'Brien. Team's trading haymakers. And again, we mentioned about the execution out of a timeout. Both teams doing very well. Bendigo have gone to a zone here by the looks of things. Might be the old... Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh, that one looks good angle-wise from where they're sitting. Not good on the depth perception. Here goes Wills on the break. Three on two. Can they punish him? O'Brien to the hoop with the left. Finishes strong. And there's a bit of pain there. Both players going down quite hard. There was no malice in the play. Rodden. O'Brien went up strong to the hoop. And... Big collision. That's, that's Rudd. Rudd more four and Lachlan O'Brien more four to his feet first. He'll walk it off. It looks like a stinger for him. Well, he's the one who I thought actually took it the hardest. And What's he holding there? Is it, is it, was it his hip? Was it hit the ground, maybe? Or yeah, there was some. It was a loud thud, and it may be lower back. Or and I, again, I think it's just a real stinging sort of one. Is the way he's walking out into the hallway. I think he's just going to walk that one off. But probably the best to do. We'll keep an eye on him as so Brian will go to the line for two. Get some of the magic spray that the Aussie cricket team and that always seem to seem to find when they get caught one on the hand or something, maybe. I think O'Brien's oh, been. His back to, bit, I think O'Brien's been told to head off the floor, but he had the free throws, which is interesting. So maybe concussion protocol, does he have to get checked out? Why is he being told to be sent off the floor, especially as he was going to the charity stripe? Player welfare is most important. Well, and interestingly, in, Paddy uh, Bird gets the free point. In the, in the NBA, when that happens, if you go out after a foul, you're actually not allowed to come back in the game unless it is a flagrant foul or for concussion protocol. So... Um, obviously, that's not a rule here, but just, uh, there you go. Fuck for you. Shaddock firing a rare miss from Shaddock. He missed everything in the end. Mildura get another offensive board and a big block from behind. I like that a lot. Darcy Lawler coming over the top. Says, get that out of here. Baseline ball here for the Heat. Three seconds on the shot clock. They go into the stack. Oh, ball comes in. Going up. He's going to heave it. Tight. He's going to look to drive. One on the shot clock. Goes in. Off the window. They beat the shot clock. From the window to the wall. <laughs> and Mildura trailing by two. Well, the heat are coming. He goes Murphy. Shows it outside. Don't tell me. Lawler again. Can't get it to go. Let's just see what Mildura come up with now. If they're going to kick to attacking or just dissect and run a bit more clock again and get a good one. They go straight at it. Nice drop off. That's good basketball. Deserved to, to be rewarded. That's the old uh, million dollar. What is it? Million dollar. I'll come back to you with that one. <laughs> million dollar play. Five dollar finish. That's it. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. I might write that one down. I might use that myself. But uh, Fana kicks it out. Good. Paddy Byrne off the bench. Three. He let's his bench know about it as well. And I tell you what I like about that. It is his feet. The heels did not hit the ground. Caught that on his toes. Straight back up. As quick as Ray Allen. Bang, in the corner. Now he decides to uh, just test out the floorboards. And, ooh, you ready to jump out of your seat on that one. I thought that was going to drop. It looked good. A 
just quite sneakily, the Braves have just gone ahead here by five. Shadok at the line for Deuce. 16 points for him tonight so far in this. So what? Put, Makes put good the, on the first. Sorry to cut you off. Put the coach's hat back on here for both teams. You got a timeout to use again. Can you kind of use one here with three or so minutes to go and just kind of get you guys a breath and see what you want to work on and set a goal for half time, or do you save it for perhaps the last minute? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably keep it in my pocket just a little longer unless there's a big momentum shifting basket here. Well, zone for Mildura again. O'Brien back on the floor. He looked to drive baseline, baseline jumper. That doesn't go. Great rebound in the end by Knight. He'll look to dribble it out. They had to pass it in the end. Ran out of room and he'll get it back. Well, he's got to get it over. Just, oh, he got over, there. but there's a foul as Darcy Lawler met him at the halfway mark. It was a block foul and there'll be a sideline ball here. Sideline out of bounds play for the Heat. Oldham to inbound. It was, it was on in the corner. He didn't quite see it. Here's Shaddock at the top. This is a 3-2 zone from Bendigo. Now they'll swing it into the corner. Back out to the top. Three ball comes. It's been such a weapon for the Heat, and it drops again. 41 all now. Dirk could be proud. 41-41. Dirk and Glenn Rice. There you go. There's my numerology <laughs> for you for the night. Some good shooting tonight, that's for sure, from both ends of the floor. Nice take. Steps through. Can't get it to go. Was burn. Keeping it alive is the King Lawler. And nice rebound from Hammond. He's got seven points. He's been solid as Hammond. And, well, he's been the electric scorer. Went for the up and under. Got deflected out of his hand into the bottom of the backboard. A, that's a foul. That is an absolute coach burner when you're 94 feet away and you're in the bonus and you put him at the line. Substitution. Willis back in for Isaac Murphy. And number 11, is that good one? We got Lawler at the line. Maybe he's the prince. Do you remember Jerry the King Lawler? Yes, I do. There we go. <laughs> so what do we got? We got here Darcy, Darcy, Darcy the Prince Lawler. <laughs> well, the actual, the prince for those wrestling fans was uh, Grandmaster, uh, what was his name? Well, Scotty Too Hotty and his partner. And anyway, but, uh, my, my, I, I do enjoy wrestling, but my wrestling knowledge doesn't go that deep. I was a kid of the Attitude Era. Loved the WCW, NWO. That was my real setup. I was the NWO man. R.I.P. Scott Hall. <laughs> yes. Hey, yo. Darcy at the line. Makes good on that one. Bendigo extend the lead out to two. Darcy Lawler will have a trip to the bench. Hammond down the floor. Hammond with a little crossover. Then goes hard to the rack. Off the window. Couldn't miss. Uh, did miss. An and one opportunity, Lachlan Knight on the offensive rebound, went back up with it, and now he'll go to the line for an extra and give his an opportunity to give his team the lead. That's the fourth team foul for Bendigo, so they are now in the penalty as well. Could be a very slow end to this second quarter. Well, to keep your wrestling things going, there is 3.16 left to play in the quarter. <laughs> one point lead to the Heat. It's getting a little bit of hot, hot up in here in Melton. <laughs> it might be raining outside and as cold as a December day has been in Victoria for a long time. But the shooting is red hot here in the CBL final. As from downtown goes O'Brien. 23 in the first half. Oh, don't tell me he's going to answer with one. So, he's, so Shattuck's got 18, O'Brien 23. The cream rises in big moments. He goes, Willis, there's a 2-3 zone from the Heat. I think Bendigo is just going to pick their spots. He's going to let this one go. That's a Heat check. Got to get, you can't play a zone and stand two metres off the league MVP in a grand final, can you, my friend? That's big. Here come the Heat. Shadok, he's going to look to answer back. I like the way he tries to answer, though. Go to the basket, get an easy one, get a foul, or even better yet, get an and one. I'm not getting too excited, Ella. By the big pill. Pillmore, he'll go to the line for the and one. Now let's see if Fafana has to go out. He looks. Pillmore played in the CBL Grand Final last year against the Mountain Thoroughbreds, and I did nickname him the Pill. He did get hot late in that game too. It's great to see him operating again. He's got that and one opportunity. 
Isaac Murphy back in for the Braves. And I'm just having a look at the crowd and they're judging by their responses. I think the Heat have brought the noise. They've seemed to have a little bit more in the house. Well, did you actually get your tip before the game? Who do you think was going to win? I mean, now it doesn't really make much difference because, the, <laughs> I mean... A little bit of data to go open. by. There is a little bit. Oh, that's... Don't tell me three in a row. No. Look, I think it's going to be down to the wire, but Bendigo just look just that edge a little bit better. They've been a bit more bit comfortable in their offensive sets. So I'd love to see the Heat do it, however, as they swing the ball into the corner. That's a tough one. That's, That's a big bang. Bada bing, bada boom. That's a certified hammer, nice. that one. Well, I've got a question. I probably should have done my research, but I remember Mildura had Ryan Knight back in the day as part of the North Melbourne Giants as well. I wonder if he's there any relation. He's got the nice moth on him. Well, that's a, a good one. We'll look that up on the Wikipedia of course, in no time. Another uh, Mildura player back in the day. He's now part of the Bendigo. I do not like that being unsportsmanlike whatsoever. Called straight away to no discussion. That wasn't a clear pass. The player was in front. He's tried to take a charge. That one, I think, I might misinterpret the, some of the letter of the book, but I think foul, yes. Bonus two, yes. Possession afterwards, no, 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 no. The only Am I seeing it different to you? <laughs> the only reason why I'd give that unsportsmanlike, I thought Rudd Morford was out for the jam in the fast break. Yeah, you want the highlight. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason why I'd do it. I, I thought there could have been a, a discussion between the two officials. It's always a tough one. It was right on the play, uh, and it was good defense as well. He tried to slide across, and only had the feet planted as well. well not like he was reaching or anything. No, no, he was a charge. He wasn't reaching. He wasn't trying to take it or anything like that. That's. Uh, I think that would get reviewed. <laughs> well, we're in the corner again. The Heat, they kick the ball around. Here's Rudd Morfor. He goes for the three this time. Oh, oh another bank open on Saturday night. It stays off. way open in, Mil um, in Melton. Off the window. That's a big six-point, uh, five-point possession. Yeah, Bendigo, the big fella, Wills. He'll answer back with the three. It's raining threes here. Teams just trading haymakers. 52 apiece in this one. A minute left here in the half. Little up fake and another three point look. That one all air. Well, hit a bit of the nylon, but not the good bit. And it went out of play. 59 seconds left here in the half. 52 apiece. Both teams in five team fouls. This is where it can get real long in the tooth. Here comes Liam O'Brien. Let's see what he can manufacture. He goes to the left hand side of the court. His brother Lachlan will receive and give and go. Now, Liam, they go to the corner. They'll kick it now. Here's Lachlan O'Brien. They could get three for two here if they're smart about Little it. Little jab step through the legs in the turn. Kick to the corner. Murph's getting three that ball up. comes. No, misses. Rad for down the floor quickly in transition they're here. looking for the two for one here, but no, he, they're not going to get a good one now. He left it too long. He should have kept going downhill while he had the momentum. The he ball. does now. That's a nice take. Ball Probably tried to force miss. it a little bit. Sorry to cut you off there, Todd. No, but right. now, Bendigo, you'll think the last shot. With the chance to go into halftime with the lead, we're all tied up. And I'll tell you what, the winner of this possession could win the game. Get a good stop, you've got a lot of momentum. Get a big bucket, you've got the momentum. Or we just play another 20 minutes and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> nice drive, O'Brien. Little floater. He's already got 26 and a half. Another two would have been nice. Murphy gets fouled. Oh, my God! What a shot by Isaac Murphy. And that is a momentum swinger with the one to come, point three on the game clock. 54-52, the Cowboys get caught into action for their first big feature of the night. They've been doing a good job down there, very patient. Third personal foul there for Luth, he finds himself. I, mean, I think for the sake of um, shooting a free throw with point three left, but we could have sorted this out at halftime, but I like the <laughs> boys are looking out for themselves, and maybe Murphy just wants to, well, I think, gather himself before his free throw, but he's doing all the hard yards down there, so. Either way, that is, we had a lot of big plays tonight, and that one was a nice one. Certainly was. It's definitely going to make the highlight package as Isaac Murphy gets to finish his dinner, and he does. Now, Bendigo have a nice handy lead by three. Rudd Morfall huge. with the heave. He wouldn't have surprised me with the way the shots have been falling <laughs> in this first half, but it is Bendigo 55, Mildura 52. Todd, I'll let you take him through the scores. I'll just rustle up to see if our halftime guest is still here or if the bus has already left. 
not a problem. Uh, Lachlan O'Brien leading the game with 26 points. He's been absolutely fantastic. A walking highlight reel is he. And for Mildura, Drew Pilmore on 11. Taryn Shaddock on 18. Lachlan Knight on 8. Archer Hammond on 7. But it's been a very interesting game. Both teams have been really testing on the offensive end. There's been some big makes in their baskets as well. Some great defensive work too. As Bendigo head underneath us, they go into the rooms and Mildura will go out into the hallway. Their rooms are based out that way. It's going to be a fantastic finish to this one. Make sure you don't go too far away. Come back in about five or so minutes. I think we're going to have the winning coach of the women's game, Mark Alabakov, to join us as Trent goes to find him. But we're going to take a quick break here on CBL TV on YouTube. And we'll be back with all the action. All right, well, half time. Here we are at the Mountain Basketball Stadium, CBL Finals. The kids are doing the half court shootout. Trent Vice here with you as Bendigo lead it by three. But I've also got with me another Trent. Congratulations from the Castle Main Cannons, Trent Leach, on making the All Star Five this season. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Trent, for having me on. No worries. Uh, well, you've uh, subbed in nicely because Mark Alabakov was going to come in and <laughs> tell us how great his women's team just did and how he's won four championships this year. Oh, as the kid makes the half court shot. Yeah. Um, but uh, so thanks for subbing in. But yeah, you, you've had a, a very good season yourself and. A little bit disappointing for Castle Main not to be playing tonight, but but a nice year of development for, for the team nonetheless. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was a good season. I mean we had a tough tough end uh, or back end of the season, but I mean we come up against some tough sides like Madura. Obviously they deserve deserve to be here today, and uh, Bendigo playing very well too. So it's good There's to been see. Some good shot making, hasn't there? And you're familiar with both these teams, obviously playing for Bendigo as well. Yeah, um, I mean Lockie O'Brien, as you see, 26 at the half, and mm -hmm. uh, we know he's a dominant player, and we know how he can play, but but also Madura, the likes of um, majority of their players as well are, are strong and um, credit to them. They know how to play basketball, so yep. it's a brilliant game so far. So what's Taryn got? He's got, uh, shadow has got 18 points already. So, yeah, he's playing uh, really well. Fellow All-Star 5 member, Lockie yep. All-Star 5. You made it last year as well, so did Lockie. Yeah. Um, yep. And so who were the other two this year? I had it there before. It was uh, Milan Savic from Melton and Riley Dunn from Backers Marsh. So um, congrats to everyone who made the team. Um, what's coming up for you uh, over next season? Are you doing uh, just Castlemaine again next year or are you doing something else in between? Um, it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm looking forward to having an off-season and um, enjoying the summer like I'm sure the rest of us are. Um, I'll probably look to play again for Castlemaine. Um, but nice. obviously, we'll, we'll see how we go, see how the body pulls up. But, but no, we should be fine. Oh, so you've got a nice good, uh, good group down there, some good camaraderie, um, some good dudes, probably questionable coach. But we'll talk about <laughs> him later. Old house mate, of course. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but uh, yeah. So I think, but 
much like here in Melton, and I think what we've seen in a lot of the other clubs around the CBL, personally in the northwest, um, definitely. Is, but it's building the community, isn't it? The crowds from definitely from week one in Castle Maine to the end of the playoffs. It was nice to see it build and really become bring that family atmosphere to basketball. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like a few of us are local. Like obviously, I was born in Castlemaine, and, and to mm-hmm. go back there and play for my hometown obviously means something to me and to bring a lot of my good good friends along as well and even Jack White being a local there as well. Yep. Um, but to have all of, we're all best mates and, and to play on the court together and um, unfortunately we couldn't go or be playing here tonight but um, we've definitely got our eyes set on next year for sure. Oh, well, you get in the gym and instead of watching games, go and start <laughs> practicing shooting hoops. Um, thanks for your time. Who's your tip for this one though? You've played both of these teams this year. Yeah. Um, you've beaten Bendigo, you lost to Bendigo, you Lost to Mildura, I think, by a yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that was up there. Yeah, it was yeah. in Mildura. So, which is a tough trip for everyone in this league. But, uh, so, yeah, what, what, what's, your, what's, your predi- what's your prediction? <laughs> it's a tough one. I mean, Mildura are tough. We know they're tough. Um, but I think I've got to go with Bendigo. I mean, my boys play there. And, um, yeah, I'm going to tip Bendigo and see what happens. But credit to both teams, of course. All right, Trent Leach from Castle Main, member of the All-Star 5. Averaged about 17 points a game this season. Thanks for your time. Uh, we'll be back in about two minutes with the uh, second half of the championship game in the Northwest final. Thanks, Trent. Thanks, Trent. Welcome back to the CBL Country Basketball League Grand Final between the Mildura Heat and the Bendigo Braves in the men's side of the draw. It's been such a fantastic opening stanza. The Heat 52, the Braves 55. I'm joined here by Trent. Trent, what a half of basketball that was. Mate, what a half of basketball that was. (laughs) It was amazing shot making. Mildura come out, 12-2 lead. Bendigo take a timeout three minutes into the game. Answer to actually be leading at quarter time. They went on a 25-14 to 14 run. No, it was something like that, 25-12. to 12. And then started the second quarter. Three ball, three ball, three ball at each end. Uh, teams trading it not just from deep but also in the paint. We saw a couple of guys going off with on the blood rule. We saw some hard hits. I've got an answer to your question. I had a quick chat with the refs oh, half time. Yep. Um, you asked about how and why uh, um, Lachlan O'Brien at the sit. Yep. Um, yeah, sorry. Why he had to sit. It was because the assistant coach came onto the court. Ah, so okay. once the assistant coach came on, it's deemed as assistance. There we go. Yep. Thanks for clearing that up. Let's and then, uh, obviously, to end the half, it was 52 all. And this man, Isaac Murphy, made a fantastic three-point play 
to give Bendigo the lead and Casey Wills cleans up. He's now the second player for Bendigo in, oh no, he's got eight. Sorry, I thought he had ten. ten. He's got eight points. He's put Bendigo up by five. Top. Yeah, Shaddock from the elbow. Oh, that one gets the shooter's touch. The friendly roll. He's got to be happy with that one. He now moves his tally to 20. I would expect both teams to play some sort of two-thirds to three-quarter court D on mates and then drop back in his own, which we're seeing from Miami. Uh, Miami. The heat here. Oh, what a strip. Coast to coast. Tries to scoop it from underneath. And O'Brien did enough to worry uh, to worry him out of the points there. Who was that who made that move? Number eight? Luth. Luth, sorry. My bad. Second attempt there. I couldn't get it. Go. Yeah, Just right, transition. Missing. Three on two. Sorry to cut you off. Shadok to... Hammonds, he's got seven already, and he's been one as well, Todd, who's just, at times, when the tempo or the momentum's been up in the air, he's come up with a nice play. Certainly has. He's worked into this game nicely as Archer Hammond. He had 13 points in the semi-final leading into this one. He's 153 points for the season. Second highest scorer for the Heat in their season as he misses that one. We're in the Heat jersey with the number 23 on it. Actually, no, I was going to say it brings a bit of pressure, but <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. The guy didn't wear 23 in Miami. Do you know why? Well, please you know fill why, me why in. LeBron didn't wear 23 in Miami? Because Miami is the only team other than Chicago to have Michael Jordan's number retired. That's a great bit of work from you there, Trent, as O'Brien goes from downtown missing. That said a lot about Miami Heat in the late 90s, though, is that uh, early 2000s, they'll retire in jerseys. The people who never even played for him. <laughs> Although we all know that 23 will be retired everywhere once LeBron retires. They're going to do it from both. But anyway, that's a whole other story. In the paint, no good on the hook age is number 11, uh, Bakewell, who he's only got four, but he's been pretty solid for him, I would say. Yeah, he's been solid, Bakewell. Let's see what Coach Sammy's got drawn up. We talked about uh, quality of a team's offense, how they execute out of baseline and side ball situations. Looks like they're going to run a line. I reckon number 23 is going to get the shot here. Shadok, he'll go out to the top. 23 is Hammond, he'll go back to Shadok. Shadok to the elbow, then he looks to drive. Two-paced attack, he'll that was nice. misses he, that one for Fana. Well, he, did the the con- he did initiate the contact, but uh, maybe a little bit tricky for himself, but still gave it every chance to go in. Here's for Fana, swings it around. O'Brien, O'Brien, O'Brien against the zone, just to sex it again. And deflects it out of bounds. Gee, there's been some good signs from the crowd tonight from... Earlier, the Clinton Tigers faithful, and now the Mildura Heat fans up on their feet. I feel that signs are just working their way back in. They're a bit of a retro thing, but lately, you go to most games, there's signs everywhere. As O'Brien nice tried to look away pass, didn't quite pay off. Ball stolen, Heat out of here in transition. They look to go hard to the rack. They can't. They pull out Bakewell. Underneath, a bit of jelly from Bakewell. Didn't quite finish it off. Here's Isaac Murphy for the Braves. He'll go now in transition. He'll slow it up. They'll reset for fun. I thought about it, then drove. Then Fafana, and one. Beautiful play there by Fafana. He drew the defender, wore the contact well, and finished. And he'll go to the line for an extra and give Bendigo the opportunity to extend their lead by six. I like the uh, bit of swag after that one as well. There's no carry-on. It's just, yep, this is me doing my business. I'll get us buckets. I'll go to the line, and we'll see what happens now. I'll attack Fafana. Part of the development group for the Braves NBL one. Oh, it's Wills, it looks. I think he's caught one. Has he popped his shoulder? Ah, uh, yes, I think he has. It, uh, it looks nasty. You can almost see a protrude in there. So I hope Wills was okay. Oh, yeah. Take his time to get up. He's scared. They need to, to get. They need to get the assistant on here ASAP and some ice. He's scared to drop his arm, but that's probably the best thing he can do. Just let it do its thing. He's. Uh, Holding that uh, arm up there like a cobra, but he's, they need to, he's just got to relax here. Oh, they did another physio-type person trying to get on the court, but the ref would not let him on. This may be a long break, this one. Yeah. As Wills, he doesn't want to get up with yeah. any hurry at all. He's really concerned about his shoulder. One of the things you've got to do with that shoulder one, you've just so got to get calm and let it do its thing. That's right. So now they're letting, this, letting the physio come on, which they weren't letting him on until there was a time now, so... Hence why they've called it, I guess. He's going to try and pop it in. I don't know if we need to film that, actually. But, yeah, probably. But anyway. Probably we'll just, the best. We'll just zoom we'll out on the Bendigo um, leading the game 59-54. to 54. It's been a hard-fought contest here. An interesting run of scoring. 
26 points Mujura had in the first quarter, 26 in the second. Bendigo 27 and 28 in the following quarters. They have a 4-2 run in this one. And it's been led by that Lockie O'Brien. Geez, he's really good on the ball, isn't he? He's got that two-paced attack. He's not afraid to slow it down, then take off, has that good first step. He can shoot the rock. The he can jumping. pass. He can yep. go hard to the rack. He's, he's a pretty complete player. He's got, he's got it all. Well, yeah, he's probably just an extra six inches and he'd be already out of this town, I'd say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he's controlled the pace very well. And whenever there's been a run, he, he or Murphy have seemed to come up with a big bucket. He had 32 last week. He's got 26 already tonight. And he is... Uh, one of the two Bendigo League MVPs, Poppy Blanche. The other, obviously her team had the big win earlier tonight uh, with Lavinia Cox getting the League MVP, but Lockie O'Brien, the Northwest MVP. But you made an interesting observation. Well, yes, I, I was going to ask you there, Trent, because you got to the bottom of this one. I liked it. You got your invest investigative journalism uh, on. and 100%. You're a great preparer. I've seen all your notes. He's impressive, there's notes. I know you can't see that on the broadcast, but he comes with a, a wealth of knowledge and notes. But... Uh, our MVP didn't make our All-Star starting five. Why is that? So, quickly I'll run through. The Northwest women was Morello, Strawn, Mackenzie, Fletcher, and Blanche. For Bendigo, so obviously Poppy Blanche there, MVP. She's in the All-Star five. So we're just having an injury break here in the CBL final. Uh, but, yes, to answer your question, Lockyer O'Brien did not make the All-Star five. That was Milan Savage from Melton, Riley Dunn from Bacchus Marsh, Taryn Shaddock, who's putting on a show tonight for Mildura, Trent Leach, who just joined us from Castle Maine, and also Zach Dunmore from Maryborough, who is part of the Ballarat uh, squadron. Uh, but the official uh, part of the rule book when I questioned our lovely commissioner, Matt Royal, is that the end of season voting for the most valuable player is done at the conclusion of the regular season. The player with the most votes will be crowned. So there's game by game voting, which is done for the MVP on a 3 2 1 basis. Uh, but the All-Star 5 is done at the conclusion of the regular season and the top 20 players that polled MVP votes, they go into a list that goes to the coaches and captains who then select the All-Star 5 from that list. So basically, to sum that up, the MVP is done on a 3-2-1 Brownlow almost style. The All-Star 5, they take the top 20 from that and then they re-vote again. But the caveat is you cannot vote for a player in your team. Okay. Uh, the grand final MVP is uh, voted by a panel of three selected by the league manager in conjunction with the host association. I think we have a few of those people sitting not far from us. Quite interesting, O'Brien. 218 points for the season and already in this game he's been an imposing character, has 26 for the game. And he's one of those players that probably gets under your skin, hence probably not being selected by the opposition coaches. Yep. So, sorry, I just, um, as I was reading the official out, didn't want to word that wrong. So, Casey Willis has gone so out to the doctors by the looks of it. Willis is out. He'll get some extra medical attention, which is going to yeah. be interesting. Well, he's, on, he's, he's leaving on a wheelchair. He's doing a poor PSI. Don't. So, he won't be coming back tonight. That's for sure. He's been big for his team and big in stature as well. But this man's been huge for the Heat. That shut off. 57-59 the game. Only two points of difference. O'Brien has the ball in hand. He goes hard to the rack and finishes. He just shimmied and shaked his way through. So, Bendigo now extending their lead out, 61-57. Oh, a one-footed three-point attempt. You don't see that often. And the rebound comes. They go hard down the floor in transition. Tried to save it, couldn't. Here's Shaddock. He just flicks a pass over the top. Knight stopping at the elbow. Then he'll come out. They'll reset. Shaddock here. Little up fake. Had this ball picked away from him. Stolen. Jump ball straight away. But Mildura will hold on to possession. Bendigo happy with that on the defensive end. Their bench got up and about. Some really good hustle. And I want to stop here. Important moment in the game here. This game is really is in the balance. Each offensive set and defensive set from both teams. Just got the clarification. Sorry for you there. I was running around. For, sorry, from the league official. Uh, just in regards to Casey Willis, he is going in the ambulance to the hospital. Uh, as he did dislocate his shoulder, as we thought. But it is a recurring injury, and they said that once he did it, obviously, it's something that they are familiar with. So just an unfortunate time to happen for someone who's been probably Bendigo's second or third best player. He's definitely been the interior presence to combat uh, your mate, Billmore. He's certainly been good. And Bakewell, he goes to the line here. And we've got uh, Jet Vandenberg is the man who subbed in for Willis. In the first, he was 
other than O'Brien scoring, Vandenberg probably helped Bendigo get back into the game. So similar situation as far as time in the half goes uh, where Vandenberg's come in. So it'll be interesting to see if he will have a similar impact. So the Heat make two of those from the charity stripe and now Bendigo go on the attack. Oh, look to swing the ball here. O'Brien, he's had a night out and he's just going to go from three. That looked good off the hands, but it missed. One thing Bendigo can't afford to do here, particularly against the zone, is just rely on the three. Get the ball movement, what they call paint touches. So you want the ball to enter the key, whether it's through a play on a post up or through a drive. Get Draw the defense in, kick it out, and you'll get a nicer look. Um, just passing around the perimeter, James Harden style, isn't going to win your championships. <laughs> but here we go in transition. Now that contact is not that different from the one earlier, other than there was another man back with him, I think. I, might, I mean, it's not as bang-bang and it's coming off the dribble, but still you've got the player retreating. He's trying to take away the driving lane. Probably position on the court makes a difference. Shut off the inbound. It's also why I'm sitting up here, not down there. <laughs> so Shut he off, is gets it back off Goodwin. He goes through the legs and goes into the keyway. Makes the two. That was a tough finish. He had no space there. He was operating in a phone book. Almost a phone book, a phone box. Now turnover. Now Shadok down the floor again. Let's see what he can do here. Shimmy in a shake. He goes hard to the rack. And one. That was big. This man has put his team on his back. He's got his team the lead. He's wrestled them in front. They now lead by two. 63 to 61. Well, Shadok is now on 27. Awesome. Interesting thing I was actually about to ask before that possession is looking at the scoreboard, that uh, timeout before it seems was an official timeout because Correct. it doesn't look like Bendigo's been docked one. I was going to suggest, is it worth Bendigo taking a timeout here just to kind of recalibrate a little bit, get O'Brien a breath uh, at this kind of stage? Because there is a little bit of uh, tempo shift. And you can feel the momentum shift. And that was actually off O'Brien as well. Here's a two-on-one. He's this getting slammed down. There's that timeout. There you go. Twice in a row, I've been half a possession ahead. Oh, so I was going to say... Casey Mills is back. He's done a Paul Pierce. He's come back off the wheelchair, and now he's sitting at the end of the bench, and he's looking like he might want to... Surely he's not going to come back in the game. Uh, he'll he'll oh. probably sit on that last seat, I think. In uh, if you can just film over on the left there, he's standing at the back, number 13. His arm looks like it's moving too much, but there you go. <laughs> the league, league official just pointed out his back, so hopefully he comes back in, but it's good to see that he's not in an ambulance. Much like everyone, I suppose. Been a big third quarter for Mildura. 14 to 6, they lead the third quarter. They now find themselves in front by five. The momentum shift come, and Bendigo forced to call that timeout, try and change the momentum of the Heat. The Heat really look connected. If you have a look at them in the huddle, they're arm in arm. That's a great sign of connectivity from the boys from the bush in Mildura. They're working their way into this game really nicely. Shadok, he's been super. And we're going to come back to a Shadok free throw. Five and a half minutes left here in the third term. Mildura, uh, obviously the Mildura town getting behind this team. They also have the senior team in the Big V champion, uh, Big V Division 2. Uh, and they're talking to uh, Coach Sammy, he's got a couple of decent recruits coming in this year as well. I've got a big fella who's from Maryland. But he wouldn't give me his name, just the description. So they're looking forward to a good season coming up. But it's all about tonight. Five minutes, just over five minutes to play here in the championship quarter of the championship game. Murphy shows it. Uh, that was the ball in the chin, but he kind of reacted like it was a Money Mayweather uppercut. Either way, shot clock's on eight. Bendigo ball. This could be a corner three for Goodwin or a backdoor layup. Dissecting the zone. That's a nice dish to Murphy. Hang time. Shadok says, not bringing that Shadok in my house. There he is on the corner. What a big series if that goes down. Can't get it to go. Put back in. Is that your man, Pilmore? No. No, so, Pilmore's... <laughs> he's no, on, sorry. He's on the pine, but here's Lachlan Bakewell, O'Brien. Bakewell. Sorry, I keep getting those two mixed up. A little handoff. Too many howls out there. They'll look to work it here. To Bendigo, Lawler just missing that one. Rebound comes. This will be a big basket for the Heat if they can get it here. Bendigo have got to be careful. This could be a real momentum shifter. Ball at the top, three ball. 
No, missing. Lucky. They were let off the hook there. Rebound by Murphy. This is where patience Mur- might be nice. Get it through here. Oh, a little stop, shake and bake. Into the corner. Now out to the top. That's cold. O'Brien missing that one. Rebound comes. Here's Shadok. He's liking something further down the floor. They'll stop and reset here. Might be worth a sub. Maybe Vandenberg back in. Hammond into the key. He draws the foul. Hammond will go to the line for two. Bendigo find themselves in the penalty. Mildura only one team foul. 68-61. Four minutes 11 left here in the third term. Bendigo, uh, the Heat, 16-6 run here in the third term. Bendigo are going to go to their bench. Checking in the game is Fafana. I like that move. Fafana really calms them down. He's good both ends of the floor. He's an extra pass kind of guy. As Archer Hammond to the line. He has seven points tonight. He's got an opportunity at two more. He nails that first one. Extends that lead out to eight. They can get it out to nine here and get another stop. This could be huge in the context of the game. Interestingly, though, they were down by 10 in the f- first quarter with Bendigo, and they nabbed it back pretty quick. But I, uh, first time you've called basketball with me, one thing I do like to emphasize is how crucial the last two and a half to three minutes are of the third quarter, particularly the home team. Not there's a home team here, but Mildura kind of feel like the home team with this crowd, uh, I guess, and the black and red seats. But it is a stage of the game where you can kind of put the other team away and set yourself up for the floor. Certainly can. I agree. Those momentums coming into the break are super important. Burn will take the sideline here. This is an important offensive set that's been a bit of a scoring drought for the Braves in this third term. And this offensive set is probably one of the more important ones of the game. It looks like a 2-3 zone here for the Heat. They've set up early. So then you go know what they've got ahead of them. Aiden Mundy in the game for the first time. It's a great time to check in. Here's Goodwin. They go into the high top. Then a bit of high low action. Fafana missing that one. Rebound comes. Here we go. Into the high top. That's a. Uh, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> I, uh, that slipped out of my mouth. I didn't mean that one deliberately. I'll admit that. Uh, but oh, I thought you were inviting me. This new part of the court. Yes. So, so did I. When I heard myself say it, I wasn't proud as. I wasn't, more no, for, I, I wasn't uh, <laughs> criticising. <laughs> no, you're right. Rod Dr. Moore J Moore. had the high tops, didn't he? He did. Rudd Morefloor will go to the line for the double. He gets the first one. Extends the lead out to 10 here. This could make it 11. And depending to have two timeouts in their pocket, but probably keep those as that one goes in. It's just out of the camera view there, but the school bench seem to get quite excited. It looked like their sandwiches for the three-quarter time break got brought over by the lovely staff here at Melton, a very uh, hospita- hospitable association we've experienced so far tonight. Even got the chips delivered to us up at the top of the... Th- oh! Speaking of delivering the chips, Burn for three. Big three, that from Burn. That's exactly what the Braves needed. Now they've got to get a stop. More for now on the ball. He's going to go hard into the key. He That's goes up with a floater blocked by Fofana. Then he the, picks up the scraps and finish. I think he was, unlu- I think he was unlucky there uh, on the drive by More for one. Probably not getting fouled. He did the nice, made the nice move of attacking the middle. Uh, this zone's really given Bendigo some problems. Comes Patrick Byrne, kicks it out to the top. Three ball comes. No. They've just tried a couple of three point attempts. Maybe try and spread that zone or get a different look. Particularly they've been short on the threes, which is often a suggestion of heavy legs. Ball into the post. Great finish. Good turn. Put him in Bakewell the space like it. He's getting warm. He's Bakewell. And again, Bakewell had a great game leading into this 24 points in the semi. He's just getting, he's just heating up. So he's, is, to he, the top. is he a toaster, a microwave, or more of a slow cooker? Uh, a slow cooker at the moment, but we'll make a judge on that. He might graduate to, to, to an air up. fryer. That one missing. Oh, nice. Then you go with Burn. Oh, pass great underneath. Work. That's great a good one. Could have got the end one, but that's a nice pass by. Good well, finish. That's, that's Burn again. Good finish by Murphy. Heat down the floor. Little pass over the top to the elbow. Now they'll swing the ball. Look at Bakewell. He's really heating up. He goes hard at it, misses that one. No Big good. rebound by Murphy. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Or as they say in Miami, Miami, Miami. Toronto. Dos minutos. 76. What a beautiful number that is and a great basketball team. But that is also the points that Mildura are on at the moment. 66 Bendigo. Get your kicks on Route 66. 
There's the spin, and we're going to have bonus two. Shaddock getting the job done, and this is where you pull me up for making too many obscure references that have nothing to do with what's going on on the court. I like it. You know, I like it. You know, definitely added plenty of flavour. Bendigo have co copped it. Sorry to cut you off. Basketball related. Bendigo have copped a taste of their own medicine this quarter as far as the bonus goes. They have allowed Mildura to be in the bonus early and have kind of been punished, which it was the other way in the second quarter. So it will be interesting to see if they can do what's worked from the last couple of weeks, draw some early fouls in the fourth. And since Casey Wills has come off the floor, the Heat have gone on a scoring rampage. They do lead the quarter 25 to 11 as Shaddock misses the second. Rebound comes. Bendigo well, going hard down the floor here quickly. Goodwin. Well, when he got injured, it was about seven Here's and a half, burn. half minutes to go in the third. And the score was 59-54, Bendigo lead. Goodwin in the corner. Now coming out to the top. They'll move it around. Here's Burn. He's going to try his luck from downtown. Burn. There it is. What a nice uh, injection off the bench. Burn has been much needed since Wills went down. That's a great observation by you, by the way, when he went down. It was actually a 23 to 10 run since uh, the Wills injury. Murphy, big board. This is a big minute of basketball. Bending over. Oh, pocket pits. Arguably a foul. Knight with the steal. Nice patience. Tries to show. It goes to the hoop. Drops it off. No good. Murphy. Oh, I think that might have been off Murphy, but that might have been the old. We were probably fouled, so, but we missed it. But it was off you, so we'll just give it to you anyway. One thing that's been super interesting, Liam O'Brien has spent a long time on the bench. I thought he really straightened them up at the point guard spot. Let's well, keep an eye nice on that situation. Too, didn't he? Yes, he did. And Burns what? had the job. He goes in. Nice Great pass by, by Fana. Fafana with a reverse lane missing uh, Morfor. He fluffed on it. Morfor just, he just spring the head back. I reckon he drew the foul there. That was some really good experience from the young fella. That's and he'll march 94 feet and he'll take two. That's a big uh, potential four-point swing there as well. But in saying that, with 39 seconds left, and the fact it is off a free throw situation, Bendigo should be smart and get a good two for one, which means you want to shoot it before 29.30. But we'll see how they go. It's a tough one, that one, isn't it? Do you go for the rushed offensive set or...? O'Brien is on the bench at the moment as well to get the extended rest in Lockie, that is. Both and been on... Burn wasn't aware of the clock. He had to have a look at it. And by then, it's too late. But now he goes. Now it's better to get a good one rather than a quick one. The zone still causing mass problems for Bendigo. Heat check not for Burn, but we've got Dreisma... Oh, no, sorry. Mundy in. Murphy keeps it alive. Last shot, but you want the best shot. That's a tough one. Murphy tried to sky with the... Fafana steals it. Now you've got the last one. Ten seconds to go. Drive. Probably went way too early, particularly when he nearly turned it over. That was nearly a foul, but the reach, probably the right call. But again, you don't really want that drive. Regardless of what happens, even you still give the other team the ball back. Sorry, I'm a stickler for clock management. Played too many games on Madden. <laughs> and now, so, okay, why bring O'Brien? Oh, okay, bring O'Brien in because it's from the base. I thought it was shots. My bad. So now they can get the goal. Oh, they caught him napping. Fafana, very nice. Fafana to the line for two. There was a good inbounds play. Fafana caught them napping. They were stationary, and Fafana was the only man moving. It looked like at one stage, everyone was watching him. And he'll go to the line for a pair here. 5.9 seconds. This is a consolation bucket for Bendigo in this third term. It's been a real tough third term, term for them. 26 to 14 run for Fafana, missing that one. 8.3 points a game this season for Fafana to be 39th overall in the league. So Fafana looking for that next one. He misses that. He misses them both. That's going to that's gonna hurt. They will get another look at it. They missed that one. A second left. A big heave from three-quarter court. It's going to be short. 78 to 69 coming in to the final term. It was a 26 to 14 third-quarter win for the Heat. They find themselves with a commanding lead coming into the final term. Well, Todd, you definitely mentioned it there as far as uh, when Casey Willis got injured. Sorry, Wills. I've been slipping on that one all night. Um... <laughs> But yeah, Casey Wills got injured. He's had 10 points. He's been the Bendigo's solid big, but he seems to be 
a shoulder dislocation. You can see him there at the back of the Bendigo huddle, number 13, just there with the uh, strap around his shoulder. So you were right, though. When that injury happened, that was the uh, pretty much the swing in momentum. Uh, Correct. And it was 59-54 Bendigo's way at the time. Yep. So what's that, 24-10? to 10. And since he went off, the Heat then transitioned into that 2-3 zone. The Bendigo then have um, forfeited all their paint touches, as you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. because they've got one less big on the floor. I'd like to see them try and get it into Fafana, try and collapse that zone, try and get it into those areas where you can draw two or three players to you and then get that extra dish. I'd also like to see Liam O'Brien on the floor. I think he yep, handles sure. the rock probably the best and on that he, Bendigo Braves team. And then he lets Lockie get ahead, run the lanes, and, you're, and all of a sudden Lockie's not dribbling it from netball third to netball third. He's running the lane and the ball's not touching the ground in that middle third, which, as we know, is just creates I, nice flow in basketball. And, again, for those listening at home, this is not confirmed at all, but I think Liam O'Brien may have a sort of a niggle. But the, the, the amount of time that he spent off okay. um, in that term and just watching him on the bench, it doesn't look like he was going on any time soon. So, And that's not confirmed. That's just me speculating because I don't think he deserves to be it, on the pine for that it, long. It, Let's it, see if he starts here. It might be a matchup thing. It like, might be. Yeah. Oh, well, and it looks like he's going to sit here as well. So yep. he's not going to come back on. And Well, this is the championship on the line. Bendigo down nine for the CBL Northwest Men's Championship. Bendigo looking to go two for two tonight after the women had a very comprehensive win against Clinton earlier this evening. And looking to make a clean sweep of MVP awards as well. Here they go, the zone of Mildura. Mildura's coach, Sammy, very quietly confident on this weekend's CBL, so this week's CBL podcast review and preview shows. Didn't want to give too much away, and we can see why. This is a big defensive set to start the fourth. O'Brien with that patient step through herky-jerky. Shot clock was on three. It didn't matter. He got thrown out of there. Turnovers do not win championships. Here we go. Here's Shadok at the top. A little hezzy. Then he puts the ball under the arm and he goes to the hoop. Oh, and it was knocked yeah. away. That was a tough call. The official was probably blocked yeah, by the she defender. Didn't have the, yeah, she didn't have the angle on it, but I definitely feel that, that was off his leg. Baseline entry but, now. They'll get the ball in. Hammond. He'll kick it out to the top. Three ball from Knight. That one missed. Rebound comes. Here come Bendigo. O'Brien with ball in hand. That's Lachlan. So we talked about the... Uh, now Burn. About that, sorry, as Fafana gets it and decides to drop it as well. Good defense there to hold him up. Sorry, uh, Todd, I was going to say we we're talking about Bendigo executing offensively and what you do to make a difference as reaching for a steal and letting Bakewell get an easy bucket is not going to help. But I think it actually starts on defense. Instead of, uh, you talked about paint touches offensively, but how about you count deflections on defense? You get your 15 deflections for the quarter, or 10 even. It's going to generate fast breaks. It's going to disrupt their offense. But it shows you've got that energy and that hunger. And right now, Vinigo's defense has been a little bit lucky. A little bit of inside-outside play there. That was good from the Braves. They got the ball moving a lot better. They had that zone sliding around. They started to create some holes. It was a fantastic pass by Lachlan O'Brien to find Lawler. And he'll go to the line for two. Vandenberg's coming in for Fafana. He was my favorite in the first quarter for Bendigo. He was good. Jet Vandenberg. Haven't seen a lot of him, but uh, has been impressive. Again, it's one of those energy guys. Makes the right pass, right play. Darcy Lawley makes good on the first. Also worth noting free throws this quarter. And I'm not, I don't mean attempts or foul count. I mean uh, makes and if the team does cost themselves a game at the line. Not saying at this moment will because cha ching cha ching, the Prince Lawler knocks him down. He He's makes got them four. both. My man Pilmore back on the floor. And there's there's that extended pressure slash zone. Cool. Foul underneath, I think, is going to be on O'Brien, perhaps. Great pass there from Shadok to find Bakewell underneath, and he'll go to the line. Was O'Brien second? I, yep, that there it goes. Didn't he have 26 at the half? He's only had two points that quarter. Correct. He yeah. was, he's been kept quiet. and That pro that's probably makes a difference. Coincides <laughs> with his brother being off the floor as well, I think. And that zone. And the zone, yes. It's not suited to his game, is it? But here comes his brother. He's going to check back in, Liam O'Brien. But also, though, when he has been attacking those, the gaps in the zone and drawing it big, 
he hasn't had uh, wheels to dump it into or to lob it up there. So ahead to kind of. So Byrne will check you out. Here's Liam O'Brien. So let's test my theory here. He looks to be okay. I, I think he's was sitting for other reasons. Matchup probably focused as Lawler swings it now. O'Brien to O'Brien. They go out the top. And here's Murphy. Murphy cannons a pass into Lawler. He couldn't quite catch it. Loose ball. They get it back. Six on the shot clock. Got to show your hands is a big there as you can't can't be cutting. Three on the shot clock. Or... O'Brien fires. Oh, the big nice. Right. That's what they need. He's working his way back into this game. He moves ahead to 31. Well, the MVP now, this is where he's going to show it. He's going to put Bindio on his back and carry them all the way up the colder to a championship. It's going to start with plays like that. Defensive stop by Vandenberg. O'Brien was ahead. Nice poise. Murphy, we're right behind it. His feet short a couple of times, Big Murph. And then he's slow getting back on D. That is, would have been a goaltend anyway for slapping the backboard. You can't have that, particularly from a leader on the team. But got to get back on D. Particularly when you're the one that shoots the three from the top. I love you, Murph, but gee whiz. Frustrating coach-killing plays. Let's see if Benigo can get it through hands now. O'Brien, he's going to get it up. That is why they wanted the, the foul as well. But, man, you just, you just give him that green light that we talked about now. He's you just let it fly, right? More four to Pillmore. Now they'll swing it around here. The Heat, they've got to answer back. More four's going to try his luck from downtown. He oh. liked it. He was running back to get on defense. Did everything but go in. Here's Lachlan O'Brien. He's been hot in the last couple of possessions. Right. Little up fake. Hezzy. He's like going to kick it out to the top. Smart. Lever. Lawler, sorry. Now Murphy. Reflection. Keep now O'Brien. He's at the top. He goes to his brother in the corner. Shot clock now they seven. go in. Out to the top. Six on the shot clock. That one goes up. That would have brought the house down. Pilmore with a big rebound. He's trapped here in defense. They're going to get it over. They do. Now they finally get it over. The Shadok going hard. Last pass in the, mid, in the last second. Drew the defend. They got the pass in. That was a beautiful play. Archie, uh, Archer Hammond will find him, himself at the line for two. That's a smart foul. I think O'Brien's shoe might have just come off at the back there. He's just adjusting that one. That's a smart foul for a couple of reasons. They, they were behind on a two-on-one break, and he managed to even it up. But also... This is smart also by O'Brien, whether he should need to redo it or not. You're using this as a, you know, almost a free timeout. Just to take a breath, gather yourself. Um, but right now, Todd, 6.24 to go in the championship game. You're down seven. This is the most simple question any basketball coach can have. Which five guys do I trust? Who are my five guys that I'm going down with the ship with or that we're taking it all the way to the top? It's hard when one of those guys dislocated his shoulder a quarter ago. <laughs> Certainly. But to me, it would seem the answer to that question is Lockie and Liam O'Brien. Well, Lawler, he committed his fourth personal, so he'll, he'll sit. Yeah, Murphy, I think, I, actually, you know what, they're going to sit, Murph and uh, Lawler, who you just mentioned, and they'll probably bring them back in for the last four minutes. Here's O'Brien. He's going to swing the rock now. Goodwin, back to O'Brien. He goes he into the high post. Go to work. Now they kick it out. Seven on the shot clock. They've gone deep in their shot clock. The last couple of offensive sets. Shadok horses the rebound and kicks it out now. Down the floor is Bakewell. He had more for cutting base. Didn't like it. Now they'll go to the 45. They reset out the top here. Little loop pass over the top to Bakewell. He got it to more for. More for driving. Might have got away now, with Now, so he'll go to the line. Might have got away with a little push off there. It's hard to say who initiated the contact. He looks but, pretty sore getting up. But a question here on uh, for Bendigo's defense. Yes, early in the game, Mildura were just bombing from downtown and making everything. But now that we've been playing for 35 minutes, heavier legs, do you go to a zone for a little bit and maybe try and make them make some deep ones? Or are they feeling it and it's going to end the game? Because they feel like they need to do something. Yeah, there's long enough on the clock to try something, isn't there? And they've got to make a decision quickly as Shadok gets the rebound. They get another look at it here. Shadok's going to try from three. Ooh, that was in and out. Boxing. Bakewell with a rebound. He went straight at it and well, the ball made its way out of court. Speaking of trying something, boxing out is probably going to be the something. <laughs> you just given, what was that, three three looks at it? Yeah, that's probably something you don't try. That should be a given. <laughs> I like it though. Is they go on the stack formation here? More for to inbound. Does gets it to Bakewell. Now they kick it out. Here's the big Pillmore. There it is. The big dagger. 
that's where Bendigo do not see man and ball turn the head and not I'm not talking about the three I'm talking about the guy cutting down the lane to get that look first which collapsed the defense and opened up the wide open look um, but this defensive intensity and the energy even just from the Bendy, uh, Mildura bench and coach getting into him there on the defensive end that's a big bucket to answer Goodwin he's got six that was a good one Bendigo still alive eight point game 505 to play Northwest men's CBL championship on the line. Bendigo with a deflection. O'Brien drops it off. Vandenberg was trying, I think he was trying to let O'Brien have a bit of space where there's a timeout. Bendigo now looks to have a bit more positive body language. The up and about, this is it. Five minutes to go, title on the line. Trent, you're a man of clock management. That's they only got one timeout left after this. Is that enough in the in the bank? They're going to have to manage this clock real late in the game. Is this an opportune timeout, or has he burnt one a bit early? Do you think? I think this is a timeout where we saw earlier they're drawing something up, um, and you want to make sure you execute because if you don't execute here and score down the other end, it's pretty much bye bye on the season. Um, but also, O'Brien went from what he back to back threes. You try to work out. Which guys are fresh? Who are you going to run with? This is the fatigue timeout. We've got five minutes to play. This is no different than what you practice at training. You put five minutes on the clock, you put one team up by ten, and you see how each each group goes. So um, I haven't been in a Bendigo training this season or last. I don't know if this squad does it, um, but I know that is something that a lot of teams do, uh, is practice these management situations. Right now, the five they're going with is O'Brien, O'Brien, Fafana, Vandenberg, and Goodwin, which it's going to be the defensive energy. It's that simple. Defensive energy and make free throws. Now, for Madura, you don't want to get too tight and tentative. You're going to stick in the zone, but you've got to just almost, you'd almost box and one Lockie O'Brien, wouldn't you? Know where he is and just let someone else beat you. That ball stolen away in transition is Hammond. He's going to slow it up, and so he should. Then he go to Shadok. After timeout, more for turnover. Can't have it. Hammond nice, going hard a, with the left. That's a great that's a, finish. That's an awesome move. Just go hard again. You attack the middle, clutch the defense, get your man uh, off balance. Nice little drop step, step, and into the left again. Can the MVP bring Bendigo home? Lockie O'Brien, 34 tonight. Gets it to Liam, and you can tell he's not a real threat with the rock from downtown. Goodwin, two turnovers in a row, and Bendigo already have Murphy and looks like maybe Waller ready to sub back in, and even Byrne. Big call to bring three in off the bench. He's more for now. What can he do? A big basket here could be huge for nice Mildura. And they go into Pilmore, and Pilmore finishes two off the window. And now to answer your question, that's why you don't burn that time out before because they would have needed it then. But wow, what a big try from downtown. And very good leadership, I'd say, there by Shaddock to come in and go, mate, we're up by 12. Why are you complaining about that? The last thing we want to do is give them four points on a possession. You know your teammates well, and I think he controlled him really well. Bendigo going to their bench here. They're going to trust <laughs> I've got three substitutions. I've got to say, I've played devil's advocate a little bit here at that game in Castlemaine. The, referee, the same ref team called two technicals for reactions were less than that. So I'm not judging anything. Maybe they learnt from last week or, uh, or looked at the tape. But uh, just interesting to see the consistency on something like that. Also knowing it's a big game, but um, I'm sure the guys from Castle Main, if they're watching this right now, maybe they feel they were here. Three at the line. He got the first, missed the second, got the third. So brings it now to 10 points. Super important here for Braves on defense. They're looking to bring a lot of intensity. Intensity more for driving baseline. He was fouled. Do and you play a bit of hacky, hacky shack now? You've, you've kind of got to, don't you? You've got to try and put a couple on the line and got manage be, the clock. Got to just trap hard, and if once they break it by the half court, then you drop it back and now Vandenberg back in. Four, Lawler four is four fouled one. out of the game. That's his fifth. Four points for Lawler. You, you were very impressed by him tonight. Corner look from Morford just missing. Yes, he played really well. Back to clock management. That's not a good shot. When you're up by 10 and you've got a fresh shot clock. Lockie O'Brien missing. 
going hard at the hoop and finishing there nicely. Now let's see the defensive approach from Bendigo here. Trap and, trap and recover. Showing a bit of a one, two, two. Good defense to force him to the sideline. That's all you can ask for. Perfect. Got a turnover in five seconds. Bendigo's bench now up and about. Eight point game. Great work by our Allo on the camera there just to make sure we get the scoreboard in. Make sure everything's in sync. Interesting here. The heat's still going in the zone, but the two players are really high set. Oh, that's a nice look by Murphy. That's a big shot. That would have been a big one to cut it to five by Goodwin, who's been good. He's had a couple of threes. He's nice Pilmore. defense just to pull up Pillmore. Sorry, Todd, I'll let you. Shadok looking to drive. He goes hard. Tried to draw the foul, but he got the two. The oh. foul was just waved away by the official. Said play on. Nice hang time. This is going up. O'Brien now. Lachlan. He's looking to drive. Does. Finds his way in the keyway. What a pass. That was brilliant. To Murphy. To so find Isaac Murphy underneath. That's exactly how you're going to break that zone down. Eight points a game this season for Murphy. He's got 11 tonight. Don't mind that foul, though. Yeah, it's early. But yeah, they're in the bonus. But you need to extend the game right now and as many possessions as possible. Missed who they called that on, though. Might have, uh, might have been Murphy's third, I believe. Wow, wow, wow. 94-86. 180 total points for those playing at home. Gilmore makes good on that one. Extends it out to nine. This is for ten. Two minutes twenty on the clock. And he nails that one. The big pill is going to be... It was a whistle. It's going to be a timeout. It'll be a heat timeout. So they'll have two timeouts left in their pocket. So oh. an interesting one. He's just going to calm his troops down, draw something up for the defensive end. See what they can do. If they get a stop here, it's going to be super interesting. Then they go really backs against the wall at the moment. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, Mildura averaged 92 points a game on the season and gave up just 69. Bendigo averaged 82 and gave up just 67. So the adjustment here both has been to the offensive and the pace. But we also know that later in the season, teams know their offense better. They know how to execute. So it's been a pleasurable game for the eyes, particularly uh, some of the shooting from downtown. Super impressive, the three-point game. Yeah, correct. You're right there. And the Heat really got hot early, and they're able to nail those triples. Morefour leads the team in three-point attempts and so uh, three-point makes with 19, and so does Knight. However, it hasn't been those fellas that have been shooting mm -hmm. it from downtown. So it's in Shadok who's got, has he got 31? Correct, and Shadok got 36. That's weird. It's been a battle of those two, whilst the uh, role players have also been just as significant. Like your, uh, you know, like Wills earlier, Murphy, uh, Bakewell and Pilmore, though, I think really they've probably been the difference, those guys, um, coming up with some big buckets. Also, just to note that the live stream does uh, stop five minutes after the game, so uh, you might not necessarily have all of the post-game functions as we were hoping. Or pre presentation, sorry, I should say. Brian with a big heave. They'll get the ball back. They'll get another look at it. He goes for three again. That was the time he gets it. That's exactly what they needed. He had to take the risk. He looks at the boys in the crowd down there as well. I'm not sure who's... I think he's a, some of the Melton locals, there's a little bit of history in that one. As Shadok goes to the hoop. And the Melton locals are now up. And there's a tech. Now... So, made basket. He'll get the extra and a technical foul. And another one. No, I think she's just saying who it was. No. No. I'm pretty no, sure she's, she's double teed there. Is that O'Brien? So it's going to be a technical foul against Mildura. Let's, no. hope, let's hope we don't have the same thing that happened last Shut week up. in Castle Main. I, I'm pretty sure that was a double T. Well, well, let's have a look. I think she called the I think she called the T and then uh, um, signaled the foul to the ref and then has to re-signal re the yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Shadok the score bench, yeah. misses that one. So, so Shadok will go to the line again. He won't be happy with himself missing those two. They'll Ball don't lie, no. Rashid says. So he now has the two bonus. for the foul. Yeah. Well, yeah, bonus anyway, but he was shooting eight. And he does nail that one, so the, the extra. No, so there must have been so. one so one tech for one shot. No, hang on, he made the basket, didn't he? 
Correct. So it was an and one opportunity. So that's right. And one. So that's what. So he had the two. They get the cool. side ball and the and one. They lead by ten. A minute fifty eight on the clock. I think they're going to clean up a wet spot here. Shadok just wipes that away. So sideline out of bounds here. This is a real important moment for the Braves. They have to get a stop here. Arms in the passing lanes. They need the arms up on defense, boys. Shadok gets There's it into Hammond. Trap, trap Hammond's don't caught in the corner. Don't need to reach and foul. And Hammond, they he's trouble. That's good, though. When you've got the trap there, you've got him in there, just keep your hands out and keep your arms up. Otherwise, you're going to get that tic-tac one that you don't need to. Force a bad pass. But they got the trouble. So, again, that's why I'm sitting up here, not on the sideline. Ten-point game. O'Brien is going to be firing. That one's short. Nice save by Majura. Straight to Murphy. What does one oh run rule of coaching say? It's Do not save, save those, it under yeah. the other basket. 99-91. There's a foul here. They're going to march down the other end of the floor. Good clock management. That foul was worthy. That's Murphy's fourth. So, more four will go to the line. I wonder what the scouting report says on him from the charity stripe, but because it looked like a pretty deliberate sort of foul as soon as he had possession. Interesting though, we, uh, I did mention about the bonus thing and Bendigo attacking to start the the fourth and they just didn't do it like they did in the second quarter, hey? More four nails that one, brings up the 100. I think Casey Will's uh, body language pretty much says it all for Bendigo tonight sitting on the, on the end of the bench down there. <laughs> and more four makes it 101, 10 point lead here to the Heat. Important moment here for the Braves. What can they do? Lachlan O'Brien, he's going to take it on his shoulders. He looks to go in, kick out to his brother Liam. So you got to shoot that. It doesn't Liam matter how good you are. Get it. You just need to shoot it. Burn now driving, tried to find oh, a, bad shot's Lachlan. a bad shot's better than a turnover. Well, sometimes. Here come the Heat. Here's Bill Moore to Moorfor. Moorfor sold the candy. I think he got the whistle there. He was lucky on that one. He'll go now to the line to shoot two. Well, Mildura... Nine and one on the season. They have been the best team by far throughout. Had a little glitch or blip on the radar at Bacchus Marsh, but you need to have those games just to recalibrate yourself. So all the credit to, uh, to Coach Sammy and the Mildura Heat here. Not to say it's over, but uh, I think the way that they they came out, they're up 12 to two. They took a big, big hit, but the way they responded and adjusted at half time. Uh, I think you've got to credit uh, the coaching and the and some of the shot making from both teams really tonight. Morfor extends that out, 103 to 91. Lachlan O'Brien. That brings up the 40 piece. 42 points for him tonight. That's the league MVP for a reason. But then you go try and trap and get back again. That's just the, you don't need to shoot that. There's 20 seconds on the shot clock and you're up by nine points. That seems like a layup, but just. Dribble it out. Juice the clock. Make them failure. They've called a jump ball here for something. Yeah, they're saying it was a jump ball, so the possession error, I think, is what they're trying to determine. Yes, it will be going. Yeah. That's a nice play. I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> but that's twice, I guess, they could have made it double figures. O'Brien pulling up this time. Misses Billmore yes, with a big rebound. If he made that to cut it to six. Oh, nice steal by Vandenberg. Well, they called the foul on... Yeah, they called it on Mildura. So, ben, Bendigo need to do their best to get in the bonus now so they can, get, they can try and get a quick foul dribbling it up the floor and now Coach Thorne's using that last time out that you mentioned. We probably should um, acknowledge a couple of the sponsors. Yeah, give them a big shout out there, Trent. Well, first of all, I think we need to thank Ally. She's done an excellent job on the camera for us. From the, the Mountain Superstar. Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, big thanks to Basketball Victoria and the Country Basketball League, the proud partners, Sporting, Dream Courts, Anytime Fitness, Play HQ, and, well, the Melton Basketball Association have done a wonderful job tonight uh, putting on two fantastic games of action. They had a pretty solid crowd on both sides of the court. Congratulations again to Bendigo in the earlier game and Lavinia Cox, who put on an absolute masterful offensive display 
for Bendigo winning the MVP. I dare say that women's team will be well on the way down the colder. Probably popped into your, uh, oh, I don't think we've got any affiliated sponsors, but one of the local uh, <laughs> bev food and beverage establishments just to spruce up the card game on the way home, I'd say, on their way back to the old uh, Babylon in Bendigo for a bit of celebration. So the inbound here for the Braves. 52 on the clock. They need a basket here, but it's going to be a turnover. Oh, now you've got the flat. There's the layup. Here's a good one. Kept it alive. And now Neil Jura might have just had the old hey boys with anything to get, this, get the uh, hero layup at the end. Shot clock on six. There's the turnover. Murphy with the steal. And that'll be the fourth team foul. 30.6 left to play. Todd, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for uh, being the rudder tonight and being That's precise with your calls whilst I've just <laughs> uttered nonsense in between like an upside-down cow. Uh, been amazing, Trent. It's, uh, it's been an experience. Pleasure's all mine. Uh, now, they, this have been, these have been the real stars of the night. Here's our MVPs. They've stepped in when they've needed to, the Tower Boys. Done a great job. And when it's not a towel, you can also use it as a cape or as, as, as the kids are doing. They're having fun. We appreciate it. You would have been a towel boy back in your day. Did you ever do that one? Never. I never did. I, um, I didn't. But uh, I was one of those kids that was always at the basketball club, though. I was always running around on a Saturday afternoon and That's it. Friday That's night. It. I was always Nothing's there. Nothing's changed, mate. Nothing's changed. Just hang around. Yeah, I was a stadium rat as a, as a junior. We used to get a, get a can of soft drink. That was back in the day when the basketball had the support on the ground, not from the roof. <laughs> so you'd sit on the support with your towel and then someone would come down and throw down a dunk and you'd like spring up to the roof. <laughs> it was worth it for the can of Schweppes. Always good. At the Schweppes Centre back my, in the day. My anyway. favourite was the Killer Python <laughs> after a game. That was, that was where it was at for me. <laughs> Well, grand final. It says a lot how the last couple of minutes of this game has gone. We're talking about killer pythons and soft drink. <laughs> but it's, it is the grand final. It's the CBL grand final. And it's going to be the Mildura Heat grand final. 20 seconds to play. Shaddock's definitely been their best tonight. Question for you, though, Trent. MVP, do you go Shaddock or do you, oh. lo or do you go Lachlan O'Brien in a losing game? Big 40 piece, 42 points. He's been huge. Nah, he's, he's, he's getting the call off now. Oh, well, they're singing not to Bendigo, I think. Or was that a foul out? No foul out. No, I think. So they're just singing them off. Uh, MVP, nah, Shadok, mate. Shadok for sure. Shadok. Could you, uh, you've got the angle on the official score sheet there. What, where, how many has he got on the... Uh... Shadok's on 31. Yep. Lucky O'Brien, 42. There you are, your man. Sorry, Shadok at 34. 70. Yeah, 34. O'Brien, 42. But, mate, when they set up that lead early and then when they needed to respond... Shaddock was the man. He was, and he's just the catalyst. He was in the All-Star 5, both him and O'Brien. So you can't really go wrong with it, but, I mean, if it was a two-point game and they lost, then, yeah, you go, baby, O'Brien. But, um, and, man, he's hit some big shots. Don't get me wrong, 42. Just by judging from the local crowd, I would have loved to be there when Bendigo played Melton. That would have been an interesting one. As <laughs> the Melton really? crowd have definitely taken the side of... The Mildura Heat. Well, I saw Castlemaine playing Melton in Castlemaine, and uh, yeah, they've got a decent side, though, Melton. But it's good to see him come out and support local basketball. There's a big three. Almost just missing there. Shadok pulling another Murphy. rebound. He got his pocket pick. Murphy then with Ray Allen. Oh, he really backed it. And that pretty much sums up the night for Bendigo. But we've got the Mildura Heat as your CBO Northwest Men champions. The ball gets thrown in the air to join by night. Huggins hugs all around. Pillmore. With 18, he's right down the front. He's in the thick of it. Congratulations to our favourite podcast coach as well, Sammy Gomez. <laughs> and commiserations to Bendigo. It's been a fine season at Mildura all year. The best team, 9-1. and one, Well deserved champions. Led by Shaddock with 34. Pilmore with 18. What was Bakewell in the end? 16. Hammond with 12. And, oh, yes, your man. Rudd Morfor with 17. Final score, Mildura 105, Bendigo Braves 94. Your CBL, Country Basketball League, Northwest Men Champions, the Mildura Heat.
<laughs> Mildura Heat really attacked this game with an intensity that was unrivaled. They got those baskets early, got on a really good run, and Bendigo just found themselves on the back foot for the majority of the game. But the adjustments at half time. At half time, Bendigo were up by three. It was the zone. And that man there, he just giving the uh, officials a pound. Casey Wills was the big difference in the end. Once he came off, the game got really tough as they forfeited a lot of their height and a lot of their offensive set. But what a game it was. Trent, it was an absolute pleasure to call with you. I had so much fun. It was great. And Ali on the camera, fantastic. A uh, big shout out to everybody who puts this all together. The Country Basketball League, there's so many moving parts. You've got so many parts of the country you've got to travel to, putting the fixturing together, making sure everybody gets a fair whack at it in terms of where they travel and they drive. There's, again, so many moving parts. And what a great way to finish it. Such a good game. 105 to 94. I had everything. I had big three-point baskets. I had a bit of drama there in the end. I had everything. But what a, a fantastic way to cap off another successful CBL season. Fantastic game, and uh, the live stream is about to expire itself. We would have loved to be able to bring you uh, the full championship celebrations and presentations, but that's just another reason why you should come down and support your local basketball so you don't miss an action that the camera can't catch. Appreciate you all. Um, there will be the grand final video, I believe, is going to be supplied to the championship winning club. So uh, for those that do miss the presentations, you'll be able to access it, no doubt, in the coming days. Congratulations to Mildura. Commiserations to Bendigo. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Ala, on the camera. Thank you, Country Basketball. We'll see you next season. Thank you to Melbourne Basketball for having us. Peace, love, and hoops. Oh, catch me, Train Off, on SoundCloud. Trainoff.com for all your latest beautiful tunes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Toddy.